you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So in the example of Haiti, a lot, uh, they're the ones who worked with the Clinton Foundation to put this on, and we worked with the Haitian government a lot, and which was, it's another story entirely on its own, having to deal with a very uh, convoluted bureaucracy, to say the least. But in Mexico, surprisingly, it was, <coughs> we, we found it very difficult uh, to get any kind of commitment. We found it very easy to get an audience and very difficult commitment, and I attribute that in large part to a need uh, that I experienced firsthand in Mexico, and that's a need for engineers. And the reason I say that is because when you build a charity home, it's very easy. The permitting is essentially zero, right? Who's going to stop you from, if you look at that house that, that woman living with her family, who's going to stop you from building something like we're building next to her because you don't have a permit? But in order to do anything where the government's involved with funding or when you're selling the home, you have to go through, you have to have proper permitting and you have to do all the engineering reviews of the home. And we found that very, very hard in Mexico to get through that process. We had hired four different engineers to help us through this process. And once they got to the sticking point where the people approving the technology said, wait a second, I don't understand what this is. This isn't a concrete block home. They really didn't know how to go around that. So what we finally did is we, we were able to find some university professors who were also able to contract with us and get us through that process. And so now that we had that we had sold these homes and they've been fully approved by the local municipality, that is where I think the, the door is working with the government would be a little more accessible. Gives you kind of that that proof of concept. Mm -hmm. How long did you say the process was? And also, what was your involvement in the question? So the houses are. With proper maintenance, I don't see why they would ever cease to exist. Uh, but we, for marketing purposes, we would say 50 years minimum. And then, of course, that is like any other home. A uh, home's going to last as long as you upkeep it. Different parts of the home will last as long. You know, you need to replace them. That's true with any home. And then my personal involvement was, so this foundation existed, and they had opened a Mexican factory, and they had uh, kind of a part-time guy that was that was helping run it. He really didn't have the time to, to do this, and they weren't really being serious about the production. So I went <coughs> to Mexico, and I was essentially in charge, I guess, of the Mexican operations. I, I spent most of the days at the factory, uh, overseeing the work that was getting done, had to make sure we were ordering the materials, talking to the families that were getting homes, working on the designs of the homes, um, putting in the legwork in Mexico. It was... I think I was I was very blessed to have this opportunity because I had a lot of a lot of, I had a lot of responsibility uh, for someone who was really not qualified for it, and I learned a lot because of it. When you're uh, putting these phones together, how do you get um, the electrical system to mesh with the when you've got different components? And if there's I don't know if there's indoor plumbing on these, but if you have pipes, how do you get those to mesh together without? Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question on that. We, we had several solutions to. But uh, if you remember that picture I showed of didn't try to connect between panels. We tried to make each panel that had the electrical in it to be self-sufficient. And the way that we would connect them throughout the house is we would run conduit either through the slab or above the panels. <coughs> so this was this was a good design challenge, for example. I don't know, I assume you remember how that works. It's hard to do this with the mouse. But if you so one of your design challenges is, is if you have to put in this extra effort to, to put electricity inside one of the panels and you have to make a special effort to either run a conduit through the slab to go up exactly where that wall is going to be, or if you have to run a conduit around the top, you want to try to make your design as efficient as possible to where if a panel has electrical in it, that it's going to serve two purposes. So you can see this example here. This, this 
is you have the, the lights and the and the outlet for this space and for this space to minimize the amount of different panels that have special functions to them. All right, if nobody else has questions, thank you very much, uh, Benton, and uh, thank you much for coming, guys. Um, and uh,